We all know how important infotainment systems are and Ford Sync 3 infotainment system is one of the best on the market. Today I'm gonna to walk you through a detailed review of the infotainment system. So if you are looking to buy a Ford, you'll know exactly what to expect. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a massive tech nerd. I love high tech stuff. And if I'm buying a car, it needs to have a good infotainment system. That's part of the reason I bought the Supra because it uses BMW's infotainment system and not Toyota's and why I bought the Tesla because they are tech leaders. I reckon Ford is very close to the top there. They use a system called Sync and we're currently at Sync 3, which is the latest, and it's just received a big software upgrade. So I wanna walk you through the infotainment system, how it works and some of the benefits of it. And this comes standard on the Fiesta ST and a number of new Ford products as well. This is the eight inch screen. It is super high resolution and the home screen looks like this. You've got shortcut buttons down the bottom and then you have boxes to select things as you go. The other cool thing is down here, you also have shortcut buttons, but they're to critical functions that you'll often be fumbling for and don't wanna spend time focusing on. So for example, this button here opens up your sound settings. So if you need more bass out of that B and O sound system, you can configure everything as you go. And this is my other favorite button. One push of that puts it into calm mode. Calm mode is just a clock and the date plus your mobile reception. Another push of that will kill the screen altogether and that means it's handy if you're at the drive-in movies or something like that. A lot of manufacturers don't have screens that work for drive-in movies. They just keep coming back on, which is really frustrating. I, and let me know in the comments below whether a good infotainment system is actually something that you desperately desire in your next new car. Let's go through the menus here. So audio menu is where you're gonna find AM, FM, and DAB plus digital radio. Uh, you can save all your stations down here. Then you can access the rest of the stations on the DAB bands through the stations button. But there's something I really don't like here. They're broken up into ensembles. Now that is basically layman's terms effectively for the different bands of DAB radio. To get to other stations, you need to flick through the ensembles to find them. So that can be really distracting while you're driving. And it's, it's something that I think they really need to fix just have them all on the one screen or divide them up a little smarter i don't know but um the, aside from that everything else is very straightforward you set your favorites down the bottom you can set a whole stack of them down there as well there's no real limit to how much configuration you can do there if we jump over to phone this is also what i like with this system you can instantly access features like do not disturb so if i don't want to be disturbed while i'm driving or, or there's something sort of i need to concentrate on one push of that means no phone calls or messages come through this screen I can also have text messages displayed on the screen and I have instant access to Siri, which is over Bluetooth. So you don't even need to have the phone paired with a cable through Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto system to get access to your phone's voice recognition. It's also backed up by a voice recognition system on the car itself. So this is a really clever setup. I love the way they've got that configured. Navigation. This is yet another example of how a high-res screen displays maps effectively. They're all super easy to read. You've got traffic built into there as well. Accessing addresses is very straightforward. You can also change the way the screen is displayed in terms of what's split, whether you see the map or your navigation items, etc. Another really handy feature, if you're ever involved in an accident, or rather if you ever turn up to an accident or need to direct emergency services anywhere, you can instantly click where am I and using GPS coordinates, you can tell emergency services is exactly where you are. So this is a very handy feature and hopefully you never have to use it, but you know that it is there. You can search through points of interest, favorites, set a home and a work address as well. So it's a very clever system and very easy to use. If you do need to type an address in manually, it's simply a case of using the keyboard on the screen or works very quickly as well. Let's jump over to the next menu, which is mobile apps. You can download apps onto your phone that are sync compatible. I kind of don't really bother with any of that stuff because the system itself is great. And then if you do need any extra functionality, you simply pair your phone with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and that will simply give you that extended functionality of your phone. Over on the settings menu is where you're gonna find the rest of the settings for the car. These are all pretty straightforward. The sound menu, which you access through a button as well. Uh, settings for your digital radio navigation, whether it uses toll roads or not, and the mobile apps that you can download. But there's something really clever here, two clever things actually, emergency assistance. If the car's ever involved in a serious accident, it will automatically dial emergency services so that they can send assistance if required. So that's if the car rolls over, if airbags are deployed, it will start dialing that uh, virtually immediately so that you will get help as quick as possible. So that is a fantastic feature. 
You've also got valet mode. So if you ever drop your car off to the hotel, you need to leave it with the valet and you don't want them going through your, your saucy text messages or perhaps your contacts or your navigation addresses, you simply set a valet mode and all they'll be able to do is just see a screen. They won't really have any access to all your personal details. Wi-Fi. That's another great function as well. All the updates for the car are supplied over Wi-Fi. So when you park it in the garage at home, you can connect to your Wi-Fi network. Whenever it's parked there, it'll look for updates and make sure the system is always fully functioning. Let me know in the comments below whether you have any questions about Ford's Sync 3 infotainment system. If you want to read it in a bit more detail, head to carexpert.com.au.